Welcome back to Broken Electronics. I'm Lee, and it's so wonderful you could stop by here for today's adventure. Now, here's something exciting in this channel. I am very excited about it. I bought a computer. Well, and you're there going, okay, yeah, so what else is new? <laughs> you're always buying computers. All right, but I am probably more excited about this one because it's a rather rare machine. Probably one of the worst designs Apple ever came up with. And up there among Apple's biggest public relations nightmares. Now you look at it and you go, no, wait a minute, that looks like a sawtooth. Ladies and gentlemen, I submit for your consideration the Power Mac G4 Yikes. Yikes. All right. Known officially uh, when Apple introduced it in the very beginning of September 1999 as the Power Mac G4 PCI Graphics. It was the low-cost G4. Apple at the same time introduced the Sawtooth, but the Sawtooths, at least according to Apple, were not available in great supply and you would have to wait for a while. You could get one of these very, very quickly. Uh, and they were relatively low cost, about $1,500, uh, which for a Power Mac is really quite reasonable. Uh, however, what I tend to think, and many others tend to think, this was very simple. Apple was stuck at this point with an inventory of Power Mac G3 blue and white logic boards. More than they were going to need to possibly replace the logic boards that need to be repaired. So they issued this thing. What the Yikes is really is the graphite case of the Sawtooth followed by the Gigabit Ethernet and Digital Audio and the logic board of a Power Mac G3. <laughs> so it was hamstrung by that. Could only have a gig of RAM maximum. Uh, the bus speed was hampered by the fact that, that it was in a ZIF socket as opposed to uh, the AGP socket used in the Sawtooth and the later Power Mac G4s. Uh, but wait, it gets better. These were originally released with 400 megahertz PowerPC G4 processors, the first of the 7400 line of processors. Uh, but Apple, and th th this is probably legitimate, Motorola was having difficulty supplying chips. Apple pulled their infamous speed dump as opposed to a speed bump where you bump the clock speed of the processor to uh, boost the performance and make the, the machine more palatable to people. They dumped this. This is a 350 megahertz. At least I assume it is. That's what, what the advertisement said. Uh, this is a 350 megahertz machine. <sighs> and Apple got roasted over this. They discontinued the entire line, as I said, uh, at the end of November. So, for three months, this was a thing. And that's what's made them hard to find. And that's why I'm as excited as I am about getting this machine. This machine, having been out there for such a short period of time, not purchased by a lot of people, they can be hard to find. Well, okay, I think enough talking uh, of this. Why don't we get into looking at the machine itself? And, and we're going to do a bit of a comparison uh, with other machines. So please stay tuned. So these three machines that I've got in, in front of us here to compare. First of all, the rear view so we can see the differences. I was able to ascertain that this machine was in fact 
a yikes very, very quickly by looking simply at the back without even opening it up. Uh, all right. Here we have a G3 blue and white. This is a revision A logic board. Here we have, this is the sawtooth that I bought a while ago, which had been advertised as a yikes. And I was just like really disappointed. See, oh, what do I need another sawtooth? Turns out it's got a very cool 1.2 gigahertz processor upgrade card in it. So uh, I actually got it for pretty cheap, all things considered. Okay, now we can look at the, the back here in the I.O. We've got two Firewire 400 ports, an ADB port. I think it looks a little like an S video there. That's uh, for older Apple keyboards and mouse. Uh, we have the Ethernet port. That's 10100. This is a blank. There's no modem in this machine. Not that one particularly wants one these days, but that's there. And then we've got two USB 1.1 and audio in and out. Uh, the PCI cards down there, we don't need to go into great detail over those. Now, the differences. They did take out the ADB port, Apple Desktop Bus, by the way. Uh, in this machine. This machine does in fact have the modem in it. <laughs> and again, big deal. Uh, and everything else is exactly the same. Whereas here with the sawtooth, we can see the modem is down here. Here is where our ether is. That's pretty much the same. This stays pretty much the same other than the audio jacks here being arranged in a vertical rather than a horizontal formation. Okay, so there, there we see the differences, so we can tell very, very quickly. Blue and white, of course. PCI graphics, AGP graphic, graphics, to give the official terms for the yikes and the sawtooth. Okay, so I'm going to reconfigure these, and we're going to take a look at the logic boards. So please stay tuned. Okay, we start out by looking at the G3 blue and white. We've got our RAM slots here, all of which are populated. So there is one gigabyte of RAM in this machine right now. Um, that's the Firewire 400 right there. Uh, this, of course, is the heatsink for the processor. Graphics card. There's a combination Firewire USB, Firewire 400 USB 2 card there. And... Another one. I've got two of them in there. Why? I'm not sure. Maybe I'll move one into the ice. Okay. And hard drive back here. Optical drive. Uh, this does have a zip drive uh, connected to it. All right. Now, if we move over here. Now, looking at the yikes, we're going to see same kind of stuff going on. Uh, differences. Of course, the, the G4 is quite a bit more powerful and hotter uh, card than the G3, and consequently we have a much larger heat sink in there. This would look to be a major difference. That's the modem. Uh, yeah. So if I ever want to dial in, I suppose I can. And while I'm thinking of it, let's replace that PRAM battery. I think that's just dust on there, so I don't think any damage would have been done. Okay, only two of the RAM slots are populated. Uh, how much RAM is in there, we'll find out, but it can't be anything more than half a gigabyte. Graphics card. Oh. Uh, Huh. That's interesting. You know what that looks like? Honestly, there's an opening in here. That looks a lot like a PCI card to allow you to put PCMCIA laptop 
type cards in. It's kind of a clever idea, actually. And then that's a USB 2 card. All right. So, there's that. Fundamentally, you know, with, with the small differences that, that I've outlined, these are identical logic boards. All right. Now, if we come over here. Now, of course, uh, this is the processor upgrade. That's why the fans are on there. Again, four slots, but this machine can't address two gigabytes of RAM. Uh, the the big hallmark signature of the uh, Sawtooth, it is the only machine Apple released that's got a built-in FireWire 400 port. Uh, and I have on Sawtooths, and, and still I think on one or two of them, run... Uh, internal FireWire drives. The, the big problem, though, is the, the machine has got three FireWire ports, but only one FireWire 400 bus. So if you put in one unpowered uh, device, as it's going to be inside this machine, you might as well forget the two built-in internals, which I've solved because I've got a FireWire 400 uh, and I think an 800 on this, let's have a quick look and remind myself. No, FireWire 400, yes, a FireWire 800 card, three uh, USB 2 ports, and of course the graphics card. All right then. Uh, so, I'm going to close this up, get this machine connected. Let's make sure it works. This machine, of course, the star of the show. Stay tuned. Okay then, let's fire it up. Time's kind of weak, but I don't have anything plugged in as far as speakers. It's just the single internal speaker. But it did chime, that's a good sign. And here comes a video. There's the Apple logo, so we're booting into some variety of OS X. Very slowly, we're booting into some variety of OS X. There we go. Early version. All right, first of all, let me apologize for the abrupt ending to the preceding clip. It booted up into what appeared to be Jaguar. It booted to the login screen with three options all of which the people's name, the previous owners. It's evidently a family. Uh, I decided not to show any of that because, of course, that would be revealing their names. They don't need to have that put on YouTube, even though it's putting their computer on YouTube. Uh, so, there, there's that. Now, I really wanted to boot it into uh, OS 9, just to have a look at that installation. The only account I was able to get into was what was evidently the son's account, because it did not have a password. The other two, which I would assume father and, uh, and mother of the son, were password protected and I couldn't guess my way into the passwords. Uh, I was unable to boot into OS 9 because the son did not have admin privileges. So I couldn't unlock the startup disk preference panel. Uh, so what am I going to do? I tried plugging in my FireWire drive, which has got various macOS installations in it. With the idea of boot up onto that, and then I should be able to uh, set the startup disk from there since I have admin privileges and all of those. <sighs> Unfortunately, the yikes has the same firmware as the G3 Blue and White. The G3 Blue and White can't boot into a FireWire external drive. 
neither can the ice. There is no boot manager option per se, the way we're used to. Uh, you can go into open firmware and type multi-boot and get a list of the available drives that you could boot into, but of course OS 9 and uh, Jaguar are on the same drive. Ah, uh, what a pain. So, you can go into single user mode and s uh, trick the machine in thinking it's starting up for the first time, create a user account and go from there. Probably the easier one. I have a set of Jaguar uh, retail installation media. You can use that, boot into the installer, and change passwords from there. So I'm going to give that a try. Stay tuned. Okay, next effort. Start up the machine and hold down the C key. That ought to work because that, that I know will work on the blue and white. Oh, things are never simple. There's always something. Okay. I am still holding down the C key. And there's our Apple logo, so we can release that now and we should boot into the installer. With any luck at all. Okay, I'm going to truncate this a bit. Stay tuned. Okay, I could let it run. It didn't. Uh go much longer here. All right, let's select English as the main language. All right, and reset password. And here we are. Okay, so I can select Macintosh HD. Okay, now if I drop down this menu, I'm 99% sure to be revealing people's proper names since they use those on their accounts. Well, heck, I do it, so why not? All right, so I'm going to reset the passwords, and hopefully, the next thing you see will be us booted into. Uh, this machine. Stay tuned. Well, that works very, very well. Uh, and here we are booted into what I believe is the father's uh, account. Uh, I would say from a quick look at this, this is obviously somebody who is most accustomed to working in classic Mac OS because notice that long line of icons, aliases, uh, there on the side, whereas someone who's grown up with uh, Mac OS X, later Mac OS, uh, you'd be using the dock for such things. Well, in any event, let's look at about this Mac, and we do have 320 megabytes. Uh, so yeah, it came originally with 64. This is 10.2.6, so they didn't even uh, update it all the way. Uh, 320 megabytes, uh, so it originally came with 64, so there was a 256 uh, megabyte module in there. And the speed dumped 350 megahertz PowerPC G4. Now, uh, the system profiler, here we come, kind of slow. This can benefit from more RAM. Uh, it is the classic Mac OS style system profiler still. Uh, so we can see more information. Oh, it's giving you the username. I'll get away from that. All right. 
Our CD-ROM drive is just that, a CD-ROM, uh, and it w will write CDs, but can't deal with DVDs at all. Uh, so installing Tiger is going to be a bit of a challenge if we decide to go that route. Our hard drive, yeah, it's a 10 gigabyte hard drive, and that is exactly uh, what this thing shipped with. Uh, and believe it or not, this is, we're talking September of 1999, 10 gigabytes was a reasonable size for a hard drive at that point. Okay, uh, I don't think we need to look at really much of anything else. Okay, uh, there is no icon in here for system preferences, so we can go up to the Apple menu, click system preferences, startup disk. And yes, now since we have admin privileges, we can in fact restart into OS 9. And I'll bring you back when that's happened. Stay tuned. Okay, OS 9 does work. Uh, not sure what's up with this blue background. Uh, the trash icon is in an odd place. I think that's because the resolution on this monitor that I'm using would be very, very much unlike anything that was used on this uh, desk jet printer. Uh, we look in the okay applications OS nine. LimeWire. How's that? Not a whole lot. Uh, most of them, most everything, I guess, would be on the root of the drive. Uh, some icon for Mozilla. Back in the last ten minutes. I'm not finding it. Okay, uh, some games, uh, various things on here. I, I am suspecting, though, just from the looks of this, it, it's weird to see an OS 9 installation with no icons down the right side of the screen, because uh, that's ordinarily where you would put things, uh, since there was no real dock. Uh, so it would appear to me that this machine was used primarily in OS 10. And Jaguar was the first version that they would, in fact, people felt they could they could actually do that. Uh, most of the OS 9 applications that are on there are things that which were run running classic. Okay, well, the the upshot to this, the big news to this, we have a working Yikes. Thank heaven for that. Uh, and my, my Power Mac G4 collection is now complete. I have got everything from the Yikes up through the Firewire 800 MDD. Uh, pretty darn cool, I must say. Okay, now, as far as what's going to become of this machine, I don't know. There, there'll be something more on this machine, to be sure. Uh, I'm going to upgrade the RAM, definitely. Uh, as far as what else, we'll we'll just have to see where we go. Uh, probably replace the hard drive. I don't know if I'll put an SSD in it or just find whatever I've got lying around for. Oh, yeah, I know what that that Rev A blue and white has got an IDE hard drive in it that I put in specifically to examine the update paths for getting from macOS 8 
29.2.2 and discovered that you can do that directly. Uh, hmm. I need to put the SSD that I originally had in that blue and white back in there. I could put that hard drive in here. That might be a plan. I'm going to take more of a look at this machine, just see if there's any applications in there that I might want to save. Uh, so, we'll, so we'll definitely see at least that, and after that, who knows. But there'll be more uh, G4 things, you know, probably get a G5 thing here and there. I've even got some Mac Pro things coming up uh, to astound you all. So, be good to other people. They need it and deserve it. Be good to yourselves. We can make this world a better place. It is not yet. So please take very, very good and careful care in these most difficult times. So, until we have all of those wonderful things I was just talking about available on the channel, this has been Broken Electronics.